want you to know today the tremendous power is available to every single person. That power is prayer power. That power is the ability to move mountains out of the way. There are many storms that come our way, but God has given us the ability to ward off every storm of life. And then when the church prays, something takes place. Too little is spent in prayer and too much time is spent in talking about the problem. If people would just start to pray and stop talking about the problem, we would see phenomenal things take place. People need to worship more. You need to take more time. Not going to God in prayer, oh God, oh Lord, we've got this problem, that problem, this problem, that problem. Forget about your problems. Go to God and just begin to worship Him. Begin to exalt Him. Begin to extol Him. Begin to call Him by His names. Talk about His greatness. Talk about how awesome He is. Talk about how mighty He is. Don't talk about your problems. Talk about how big your God is. Talk about how awesome your God is. I want to challenge every single one of you to write down everything about how great God is. And when you go to Him in prayer, spend all of your time just exalting Him, just honoring Him, just lifting up His name. Spend very little time talking about the problem. Just go to the book of Hebrews and go read all of the people and just say, you're the God of this one. You're the God of that one. You're the, you're the God that brought the three Hebrew children through the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The God of Daniel. The God of David. The Bible says He will perfect that which concerns you. I've got news for you. God didn't bring you this far to leave you now. God didn't bring you out of all what He's brought you out. For Him suddenly to let go of you. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy as he would try to whisper to you, God's not for you. God's against you. That's a lie from hell. I got news for you. God is for you. He's not against you. He loves you. He's on your side. God's grace comes to even those that have not been faithful. God's grace has comes to even those that have really not walked the way that they should walk. And yet His grace and His mercy is extended to every single person that will believe Him, that will come, that will humble themselves under His mighty hand. So He's the God of a hundredfold blessing. He's a God that causes you to increase in the time of famine, in the time of drought, in the time of storm. He's the God that makes a way where there is no way. He's your peace. He's your joy. He's your righteousness. He's your redeemer. He's your savior. He's your healer. He's your provider. He's your king. Somebody said, what God do you serve? That's the God that I serve. Worship Him. Open your mouth and give Him glory. Open your mouth and honor Him. Let your voice be heard. You know, if you just take a half an hour and begin to do that, instead of even bringing up what you even came for in prayer, you begin to worship God. What does the Bible say? Let God arise and His enemies be scattered. You begin to worship God and then God begins to flood your life with His very presence. You better get ready because God's about to do great things for you. Live Baltimore, Maryland. Guys, we're so glad for you to be here tonight. Yes, we're live. This is awesome. We got a lot of updates, a lot of things God has been happening. We've been all over the city. Man, this city is on fire. It is ripe for revival. I want you to stay tuned tonight. Uh, if you're watching, please share this broadcast. Tag people that you know, and uh, let's, let's get this thing moving for Jesus. We got a couple highlights we want to show, and we'll be right back.
ago, I was in this city, Baltimore, Maryland. I was a drug addict, snort cocaine, partied all the time. And literally, 15 years ago, I tried to commit suicide three different times. I tried to end my life. Literally overdosed on drugs in my room. Literally dying in my room. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, on the inside of me said, God, give me a second chance. From that day on, I was never the same. People started coming to me, telling me about how much that he loved me and has an awesome plan for, for my life. I want to tell you tonight that God loves you. He cares about you. You have much more to gain than to lose. He cares about you. And I want you to say this simple prayer. If you're watching tonight, just say this with me, with your heart and lips out loud. Say, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive me of all my sins, and make yourself real to me. If you prayed that prayer, you can check the link below, www.com riverchurchbaltimore.com. We'd love to have you come out. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Tony, we're live here in Baltimore. I want to encourage you just for a moment. Isaiah chapter 6 says, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Also, the Bible's simple. The Great Commission, Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. What did he say? Proclaim the good news. I'm here to tell you today that God is bringing good news. Good news that you don't have to be sick anymore. Good news that you don't have to suffer and lack and poverty and destruction and famine. But God has an awesome plan for your life. I want to tell you all those that are in Baltimore, Maryland, Annapolis, Ellicott City, Towson, wherever you might be, there's a home for you. We love you. And uh, I want you to click that link below. You can check out www.riverchurchbaltimore.com. We'll give you more information. We're doing five weeks back-to-back. -back. You need to be a part of it. We're doing five weeks back-to-back -back all over the county, all over the city. Bring your friends and family. You might be from Pennsylvania. You might be from Maryland. You might be from D.C., even Virginia. We invite you to come out. You might even be even in another state. We welcome you guys. It's going to be fire. There's going to be signs, wonders, and miracles. People, we're going to go out on the streets and see the lost get saved. This is a church not just for people to stick in the pew and get built up and not do anything, but this is a church that's on the move. We are taking the city, and we're taking the city. So I want you to join. If you want some more information, you can check the link below. We love you guys so much. Have an awesome, awesome evening, and God bless you. This is Pastor Tony. We're live here in Baltimore, Maryland. We're so excited. We're downtown and uh, the city you can see behind us, the awesome skyline. It's beautiful out here. It's so awesome to be here. A lot of you guys are uh, just realizing, but we actually launched out just a, about a month ago uh, from the River at Tampa Bay Church. Awesome pastors, Pastors Rodney and Adonica. You can check them out on revival.com. Um, but we launched out of that church to start the River at Baltimore Church. And uh, I just have a quick uh, message I want to give to you. But um, I want you to, if you have your Bibles tonight, and uh, as you're opening your Bibles to Acts chapter 8, you can share this live broadcast. You can you can hit the like button, subscribe on our YouTube, Facebook, all the different things. And then also you can check out our website, uh, www.riverchurchbaltimore.com. Riverchurchbaltimore.com. But as you open your Bibles up to the book of Acts, Acts, Acts chapter 8, verse 4 says, Therefore there was a scattering abroad and went everywhere, and they went preaching the word of God. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spoke and heard and seen, the miracles which he did. Verse 7 says, For unclean spirits cried out with a voice, with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many were taken of palsies and were lame and were healed. Verse 8 says it's very powerful. There was great joy in the city. And I believe... You know, a lot of people are bringing messages of doom, but I believe that there's good news. There's hope. 
You know, just like with Sodom and Gomorrah, there was righteous, you know, God God didn't judge. He waited for them to leave, and then he judged, uh, obviously, Sodom and Gomorrah. I believe the same thing is going to happen. But as long as the righteous are in the earth, I believe God is going to have mercy. I believe we're going to see another great awakening. I believe God is not finished with America yet. I believe that God is only beginning. I believe all this stuff is stirring up for a massive, massive revival. The Bible says that God sent Philip. He sent them uh, to a city by himself. He was by himself. He brought no one with him. And uh, in that city, he didn't have a sound system. He didn't have ushers. He didn't have greeters. He didn't have anything. But one thing he had was the word of the Lord. And he had power. He had the Holy Ghost. And that's what's happening. God has sent us to Baltimore with the Holy Ghost and power. And I'm excited. But let me show you. I, I wrote this down on my notes. But three things that are coming in America. Number one is like Philip's Day. Great multitudes are coming. I had a dream not that long ago, about a year, year and a half ago, that I was actually in Baltimore Orioles Stadium. Right behind us, right in the corner there, is a massive Canham Yard Stadium, which can fit probably 70 to 60,000 people. Uh, the Lord gave me a dream that I was actually in that stadium. I believe these stadiums weren't made for football and playing baseball. I believe that they were, they were there for the preaching of the gospel. Hallelujah. Uh, just like I've been studying behind Dr. Billy Graham, you know, he packed out stadiums all across America. And I believe it's going to happen again, but with the multitudes. And I'm excited, just like Philip. Philip, the Bible says, when he went down the, uh, to that city by himself, the multitudes begin to gather from left and right and packed out the city. So I believe that there's going to be multitudes in these last days. I believe that many people are going to be crying out for God and that the men and women of God would be so charged and filled with the Holy Ghost and power, glory to God, that they would be so intoxicated with God that when people see them like the book of Acts, that they would look at him and say, oh my goodness, that's a God, but it's really not. We're sons of God. Hallelujah. But I believe that there's going to be in those last days, great multitudes. Number two, I believe that there's going to be great signs and wonders. I believe that the gifts of the spirit are going to be op getting to operate like never before. I remember a great uh, man of God that's one of my good friends. He's a prophet of God, and he went on a long fast. And on this fast, he was asking the Lord. He said, God, I don't see what I saw in the book of Acts. I don't see what I saw in, 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 the, in the book of Acts. He said, God, can you still do this today? He went on a fast, and he said, as he was walking to go to the restroom, he heard his name called twice. He turned around, and he saw this cloud envelop in his room. And God spoke out of that cloud and said, I'm the same God uh, yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God. He does signs and wonders. He does these things. Why? So we can, we can really show that God is real. You know, people like me, before I got saved, I would have never heard the gospel. I didn't really care. But when the power of God was displayed, when I saw the proof in the pudding, everything changed. And I believe that's what's going to happen in America and around the world. Those ministers that are watching, I pray that God would anoint you afresh with power. I pray that his anointing and his fire will go through your hands. And even like the men of old, when they would lay hands on people, that it would be weeks and days after the man of God laid hands, that there would still be a burn mark on the inside of them. And the healings, the, the instant miracles would come back to the church again. And I believe that's what's coming in America. The next one is this, is number three, is that there was great joy. You know, this city, Baltimore, that I'm in right now, is uh, there's a lot of racism. There's a lot of crazy stuff that's going on. And there's a lot of depression. You can see the depression on people's face. You can see that there's no joy. But I'm here to tell you that we're bringing good news to Baltimore. There's good news to the cities of America, New York, and uh, New York, New York, and Camden, New Jersey, and Philly, all these different cities, Miami. I believe there's going to be a great joy. Why? Because the gospel is being preached. People are being saved and delivered. And that's where true joy comes from. And you might be watching tonight and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm here to tell you uh, that he loves you. He has a plan for your life. What would happen if you died today? I want to tell you that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You don't have to go to the devil's hell because 2,000 years ago, the price was paid on that cross. Jesus came. He died for us. The Bible says that he became poor, that we would become rich. The Bible says that his purpose was in John 10:10 10, 10, that we that he would come to give us life and life more abundantly. That was his purpose, guys. His purpose wasn't that we would be broke and busted and disgusted and 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 live a, a tragic life. No, he's come to give us life. He paid the price. The Bible says that we've all sinned, we've fallen short of the glory of God. You might be watching tonight and you never accepted Jesus, or you might accept him, but you're not living on fire for him. I'm here to tell you that Jesus is coming back for a, a spotless bride. He's looking for those that are on fire. You know, the Bible says in the book of Revelations, he says, your heart can be either cold, warm, 
or hot. He said, if you're lukewarm, if you're medium temperature, temperature, he said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. What does that mean? That means Christians that say they confess God, but they don't live for him. But tonight you can rededicate your life to the Lord. I want you to bow your head wherever you might be tonight. And I want you to close your eyes and say the simple prayer with me. Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I rededicate my life to you. I believe that you died on a cross for me. You're coming back again for me. I want you to say this with your heart. Say, fill me with your Holy Ghost in power to be a witness. Say, Lord, use me as a vessel to impact the world. Listen, if you prayed that prayer, listen, I want to tell you that God loves you. Very, very soon, we're going to be having free books on our website that we're going to be giving out to encourage those. Uh, listen, you can share this broadcast. Also, you can check us out at the River. Uh, churchbaltimore.com. You can check us out. And uh, if you want to be a part of what we're doing, listen, very, very soon we're going to be running revivals left and right all over the place. You might be in Maryland. You might be in Virginia, Pennsylvania. We'd love for you to come out and be a part of it. You can private message me on any social media, on YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. We would love to have you join and be a part of this. And listen, it's not over. I believe it's only the beginning of what God's going to do. I believe, just like in the 50s, how they had the mass tent revivals, God is going to do it. But it's going to be bigger than tent revivals. It's going to be stadiums. So stay tuned. God is awesome. He's with you. And God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening and night. God bless. Hey, guys, if you want to be a part of Nations of Blaze Ministries, the River Church of Baltimore, you can sow into it and make an eternal difference. Listen, guys, we're lighting fires in Baltimore, around the counties, all over Maryland. Literally, fires are about to break out. We're going to do neutral venues. We, got, we even got a guy right now that wants to set a tent up for us to do revival meetings. I want you to be a part of that. You can check out our website. You can sow into it. And listen, the Bible's simple. The Bible says where your treasure is, there will your heart be. And Jesus was very clear in Matthew chapter 6. He said, don't store it for yourself treasures on the earth where moth and rust do corrupt and thieves do break through and steal. Remember, when you sow into the kingdom, it'll never corrupt and it'll always be a heavenly reward. Listen, people are crying out. People are dying left and right in this city. People are dying all over the place. Make an eternal impact and let's see a whole America be shaken and cities around the globe. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you so much for your gift.